Mungu Senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I am deeply honored and privileged to stand here before you as the pioneer operative and the presidential nominee for the office of the Chairman Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for the purpose of screening to that office sequel to my nomination by His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR. Mr. President, distinguished senators, let me start again by thanking the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for finding me competent and deserving as the Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission and to also assure him and indeed Nigerians that the confidence he has on me will be proven beyond doubt at the end of my term in office. Mr. President, distinguished senators, my name is Abdul Rashid Bawa. I'm a 40-year-old Nigerian, a public servant, and a detective of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission with all the powers, privileges, and immunities of a police officer as enshrined in the EFCC Act. Mr. President, distinguished senators, I hold a bachelor's degree in economics some 20 years ago, and I also have a master's degree in international affairs and diplomacy, both of which I obtained from Usman Udonfode University, Sokoto. Mr. President, distinguished senators, I'm a certified fraud examiner from the prestigious American-based Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, which is the largest anti-fraud organization in the world with over 85,000 members and members drawn from over 140 countries. I'm also a certified anti-money laundering specialist, which is also an American-based association that dedicates itself in enhancing the capacity of financial crime fighters around the world. Mr. President, I've also been trained by the Federal Bureau of Investigation and also the National Crime Agency of the United States and United Kingdom, respectively. United Nations Office of Drug and Crime are also an organization that trained me, the KPMG, the World Bank, locally here in Nigeria, I've been trained by the Nigeria Police, the Department of State Security Service, and of course, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Mr. President, my first and only job in my young and youthful life is with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission which I joined 16 years ago as part of the then drive of recruitment and training of EFCC's homegrown investigators. I joined the EFCC in 2004, and together with other 116 Nigerians, we were trained in the art of law enforcement and financial crime investigation. An open graduation from uh, the police college where we are trained happens to be ninth of our all out 
of the 117 officers that were trained. I was posted to Lagos then, uh, Mr. President, distinguished senators, and I rose through the ranks from an ordinary uh, team member to become a team leader. It is in record in EFCC that I have to be the first regular staff of the EFCC to be appointed a team leader in the midst of all police officers that have dominated the scene of operations. I became a sectional head and I also became a zonal head. And by way of emphasis, Mr. President, distinguished senators, I'm humbled to say also that I happen to be, as of today, the only EFCC officer to have headed three different zones. I was first appointed a zonal head of EFCC in Ibadan, and after my service there, I was transferred to Port Harcourt as a zonal head. And currently, bef before this uh, uh, noble nomination of me to the office of uh, uh, the executive chairman of EFCC, I'm heading the biggest and the largest operational base of the EFCC in Lagos, where I supervised 604 officers and men of the EFCC, including, of course, supervision of over 8,000 legacy cases and ongoing cases in the Lagos Zonal Office. Last year, alone, distinguished senators, despite uh, the incidences of COVID-19 uh, pandemic, as well as the end of SARS uh, protest, which has, uh, which has which hit uh, the Lagos Zonal Office more than any other zone, we were able to secure over 220 convictions. We also recovered over 10.9 billion, as well as over 1.9 million US dollars at the Lagos Zonal Office. Mr. President, distinguished senators, as I said earlier on, I have been in the EFCC for 16 years. I have participated in several high-profile cases that has taken me around the world. I am vast in the investigation of advanced fee fraud, money laundering, public sector corruption, and other financial crimes-related uh, uh, issues. I have testified in several courts around the country, leading to several convictions and recovery of hundreds of billions of Naira. Mr. President, distinguished senators, I'm not only an investigator that investigates and uh, prosecute offenders. Uh, because of my expertise, I'm humbled to state also that I'm also a trainer at the EFCC Academy. As a young man coming out of college, I was pinpointed and I was assigned, among other officers, to be part of the training of the course that is immediately after us, which is course two. I've also participated in the training of course three, course four, as course five. Uh, most recently, I was heading the capacity development division of the EFCC Academy, where I was in charge with development of curriculum for the betterment of our officers. Mr. President, distinguished senators, I wish to state here that in all my career at the EFCC, the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the extant laws of this country, rules and regulations within the EFCC have always and will always guide my actions if confirmed by this hallowed chamber as the next executive chairman of the EFCC. I'm not unmindful of the enormous responsibility before me and my colleagues, but I believe we are up to the tax. And I also believe that we will not fix the blame of the past. We will accept our own responsibility for the future. The fear of God, national interest, patriotism in us, and the fact that we are young men, the future of this country is with us, are the driving force that will ensure that come what may, at the end of my tenure, I will leave the EFCC a better place. 
Mr. President, distinguished senators, permit me to state here also that the EFCC is apparently the only cosmopolitan agency in Nigeria looking at the composition of the board of the EFCC. You have representation from the Ministry of Finance, from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, from the Ministry of Justice. You have Controller General of Customs, you have Controller General of Immigration, you have Controller General of Prisons, CBN Governor, uh, Director General of the DSS, Director General of NIA, you know, among others, which makes it, uh, which makes it very easy for me, if confirmed by this hallowed chamber, to be able to relate with other security agencies in this country for the purpose of achieving the mandate of this government of ridding this country of all forms of corruption as well as economic and financial crimes. And to our strategic partners around the world, particularly in the United States of America, United Kingdom, South Africa, etc., I intend to work with them closely sharing information and intelligence in order to attain our mutual objectives as well as our independent objectives as well. But paramount of which is close to my heart is the fact that we need to repatriate all our stolen assets for the benefit, for the benefit and the betterment of all Nigerians here at home. Mr. President, Distinguished Senators, I'm not unaware of the fact that my nomination has caused a lot of, um, uh, a lot of hope for the teeming and millions of youth around the country and the world at large. I want to state here, Mr. President, Distinguished Senators, that I will Going, I'm going to give them a very good representation in the governance of this country so that at the end of the day, more youth will be given huge responsibilities in this country. Let me conclude, Mr. President, distinguished senators, by stating that it is a dream of every patriotic Nigerian to see Nigeria growing to a greater height. And I hope and pray, Mr. President, distinguished senators, that if confirmed, I will leave to that tag to contribute my quota in seeing that this country is taken to a greater height. There is no better way to end my modest address, which I'm humbled to address this distinguished gathering than to pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful, loyal, and honest, to serve Nigeria with all my strength, to defend her unity, and uphold our honor and glory. So help me God. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, distinguished senators, for inviting me to this hallowed chamber.